You are here to learn how to calculate a set of baseline indicators for community projects designed to cut carbon. What is a baseline? A baseline is simply a fancy word for how things were before your project started. It is important to know how things are to begin with so you can effectively measure the changes you are making as your project develops. Let me give you an example. If you're calculating the effect of your carbon cutting switch off lights campaign, your baseline would be how much energy your target group were consuming before you began your campaign. If you have this information, you can use it to measure any changes that your project makes. So think about your project and the changes you hope to make. Now look to find out the current state of affairs of any factors you're looking to change before you spring into action. Let's look at some examples. If the aim of your project is to reduce carbon emissions caused by cars in your area, then your baseline would be how long and for how often do the people in my area currently use cars? Maybe the aim of your project is to reduce domestic energy consumption in people's homes in your community. In this case, your baseline is how much energy are people in my community currently using to heat and power their homes? Or if you were looking at ways to reduce your community's carbon footprint from food consumption and wastage, then your baselines would be what is the current food carbon footprint in my community? And what types of food do people currently buy? And how much waste is produced? Now, think indicators. Indicators are the statistics you can measure against, so you can effectively judge the impact of your project. These can be divided into two types, soft indicators and hard indicators. Hard indicators are generally facts and figures. For example, how many miles do my community travel in cars each week? Or how many kilowatt hours is an average house in my community using over a three month period? These are the most important indicators because they're measurable and will help you to be able to work out all the important changes you've made in CO2 emissions. Soft indicators are often more difficult to measure as they are generally shifts in attitude, awareness and behaviour or community engagement and involvement. They are things that can't necessarily be measured in numbers. Some examples are How aware are people about local cycle routes? What are people's current attitudes towards climate change? Do they think they can make a difference in their own homes? As each project is different, each baseline and the methods you use to establish baseline indicators will also be different. But let's think of some methods you could use. Questionnaires. Questionnaires are a good way of finding out about the current habits of your target group. They are easy to write and easy to send. However, usually only 2% of people respond to questionnaires that are sent to them. It may be better to hand out and collect your questionnaires in person. Hands up surveys. To get lots of hands in the air, you will need a group of people. Important to use a hands up survey at the beginning of the project in order for you to be able to measure the difference when you take the hands up survey again at the end. Interviews. Interviews can be held and recorded with your target group or a random selection of folk taken from your target group. You can obtain key information you may not have thought to ask by using this method. However, it is worth bearing in mind that you will generally need a set list of questions. That way you can measure the different responses against them. Utilising information that is already out there. That's right, remember other people may have already obtained the information that you need. But of course, it's important that the information comes from a trusted source and is reliable. Observation. This is more often used to measure soft indicators but just involves looking around and noting relevant details. For example, you might want to observe how many people you see currently cycling or waiting at the bus stop. So you have some methods, but remember the most important thing is the information you will be getting. You need to try and find the information that can be measured against, remember. Before you start, you need to make sure that you ask enough different people to fairly represent your whole group. It's good practice to aim to get real information from, say, 10% of the participants. But this can be really challenging to do quickly if you aim to work with, for instance, 600 households. So try to get information from at least 2% of the people you plan to work with for larger projects. Remember, it's always better to have more information than less. So aim for a bit more than the minimum required. And if you can ask your whole group of participants, then do. And make sure that you don't just ask people who are already involved and engaged in the project. This would be unrepresentative and would also give you really high baseline figures that you'd have a hard time improving upon. 
So now that you know all of this, let's go through an example project and its baselines so as to bring it all together. Mr Wheeler is designing a new project for Pedal Power, a group working to promote cycling. He is going to send out leaflets with personalised information about walking, cycling and public transport routes. And he is also going to run cycling training events. There are a total of 650 households in his neighbourhood. Pedal Power are aiming to get information from at least 20 of them. So he's going to try 50 to make sure he gets more information rather than less. So what is his baseline? He needs to find out how much travelling people in his neighbourhood are doing cars and public transport at the moment. They decided to ask teachers to do a hands-up survey with one class at the local school to see how many children cycled there each day to help him calculate his baseline. He then planned to repeat the hands-up survey at the beginning and end of every workshop to see how much difference his work was making. And he will also observe how many bicycles he sees around his neighbourhood on a normal weekday. With the information that he sends to each household, he will include a short questionnaire for people to complete. To try and encourage people to fill them in, he's going to offer an incentive prize draw that completed questionnaires will be entered into. The Delivering Change Guide leads you through ways of using the information you've collected to calculate your baseline and your estimated carbon savings. It is always a good idea to check your baseline against average figures. Some of these are listed in the Delivering Change Guide and you can find even more examples on our CO2 fact sheet and other helpful guides which you can download from our website. If all else fails, then use these kinds of reliable sources to find average figures as the basis for calculating a baseline. But remember, working with people in your community to research the real energy use facts and figures is a very good way of building up interest and support for your project. Now, good luck and get calculating. <laughs>